We are officially live on this Wednesday afternoon, and I am fired up because today we're doing one of my most favorite things to do, and that is these Etsy shop audits. I just like looking at business in general or different websites or maybe even, you know, just a, uh, a typical e-commerce store. But what we're really looking at today is Etsy shops. I just love digging into people's businesses. And that's what we're going to be doing here today is really kind of pulling back the curtain and, uh, and sharing with you five different Etsy shops. And what we're going to be doing is really doing these as if we were doing a private audit. Now it'll be a condensed version because obviously we don't have that much time to spend. Normally we spend between 20 and 30 minutes on doing a deep dive when uh, people hire us to do these Etsy audits. But what we're going to do today is we're going to pull these up and we are going to give our thoughts and we've already kind of skimmed them real quick. We haven't spent a lot of time on those, but we're going to really just give our thoughts, our feedback on what we would do to really take it and grow it or even pivot it a little bit. So this way here, you have more focus and potentially get more traffic and sales. That's really what this is. It's a growth audit is what we're calling this. So really excited to dive in. Uh, I will say, I want to thank everyone for submitting their Etsy shops. We posted uh, inside of the Facebook group and we've got, I think we got about 42 to 45 ish somewhere in there of people that submitted their shops. Everyone did agree to allow us to share this. So I just want to be upfront with that uh, and uh, and be able to share it with you. So it's a learning experience here on this, uh, on this episode. So that's really what we're going to be doing here. I'm fired up. Uh, Chris, are you fired up? I know that you probably are, but uh, what's going on over there? Man, I'm I'm ready to rock and roll. And I hadn't seen any of these until about two minutes ago. And I got to say, some of these have a lot of potential. Some of these are a little bit confusing. Uh, and, and some of these have a long way to go, right? So bear with us as we work our way through this. We're going to give our honest feedback on these, obviously. And these were all submitted from inside of the community. And Scott, I know the, the good news is it doesn't look like anybody has made, at least from what I've seen so far, a fatal mistake that is uncorrectable. But we may we may find that uh, as we work our way through these, but I'm pumped up. I know just like you, Scott, I love seeing what different people are doing and, and where people are and just some of the out of the box ideas. And I know one of these is not something that would ever have occurred to me, um, to do. And I think it's, it, it is one of the ones with the most potential as well, which I think is kind of cool. It's the same reason we talk about if you're struggling to find your niche doing the touch list, right? And I know that this is something that you've, if you've been a listener for a long time, or you watched a bunch of our videos, you've been listening to the podcast, you've heard Scott and I talk about the touch list. It has literally created seven, eight and nine figure businesses, right? Uh, just from the things that you're touching. And so don't overlook that if that's where you're stuck. Obviously use these for some inspiration about other things that you may have in your life. But if you're struggling, you're stuck in the niche research side of this, uh, make sure to, to do that touch list. Do not overlook it because it's so simple. Um, but a bunch of these, I guarantee you, came from somebody's touch list. So I wanted to throw that out before we jumped in. And Scott, with that, it looks like we are rocking and rolling on Facebook. We are rocking and rolling on YouTube. If you guys are listening to this and you're not in one of those two places, it means you're probably listening on the podcast. That's awesome. But if you want to come join us live, you can do that. It's Wednesdays. It's usually noon Eastern time. Uh, occasionally we have to float back and forth, but you can join us uh, at brandcreators.com forward slash group. And Scott anticipated me threw up the call to action for everybody that's on with us live. You'll be able to catch us live. And that way you can ask questions. A lot of times what we're able to do when we go through a bunch of this different material, we'll save some time at the end. I'm not sure with everything that we have going on today that we'll be able to do that. But even if we don't have a little bit of time at the end for the more open Q&A from the community, I'll be in the chat both on YouTube and on Facebook, making sure you guys get answers to those as well. Yeah. And Chris, uh, I just, again, wanted to do a little bit of, uh, of, uh, house cleaning here is, uh, let's, uh, make sure that everyone that is here, uh, and that is, uh, you know, viewing this live, uh, you guys are able to ask these questions. So put them in there. We will basically come back even later and answer these. So definitely do that. Um, the other thing is, is if you are on the podcast, you may not be able to visualize what we're seeing because you're not seeing it. You're 
listening to it. So if you want to watch any of these replays, you can head on over to the group. They are all posted inside of the group or on the YouTube channel. So definitely do that. And Chris, just a little side note, did everything work uh, as far as the notifications? Did everybody get notified? Are we good to go? I don't have my phone with me here today. So I just want to make sure that we're good. I know we got emails going out. We've got text messages going out. So uh, if you guys uh, are here, awesome. I just want to make sure that everyone's going to be able to show up that wants to show up. So all right, cool. So uh, with that all being said, let's get rocking and rolling. And I will say this, we are also going to share, if we have time, a sixth. I, I actually had five and then the sixth one, I was like, this one here is really good, has a ton of potential. I would love to dig into this one, but we already have five. The last time we did this, we had we did three. Um, so we're going to try to sneak that one in. So stick around. We're going to share that. I think it's got a lot of potential. And I'm excited to dig into that one. So with that being said, let's get this party started, shall we? Uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And guys, if you can do me a favor in the chat, in the comments, wherever you're watching this, let me know if you can see and hear us okay. And if you can especially see that screen that I have there that we're sharing. All right, cool. So let me get on over to that screen. And what we're looking at here is a... Uh, well, it's a shop, an Etsy shop called Boards, Dwarves, and Dragons. And uh, we're looking at some dice, some game pieces. Uh, some of this stuff, I don't know what it means because I'm not into dwarves, which I think is, is something. And then dragons is, I think, Dungeons and Dragons probably. Like, it's games, right? So I love this idea. I love this idea because I think everyone plays games. Everyone looks forward to playing games. It takes us away from... I don't know, the everyday life. And a lot of people are, you know, gamers out there, like, you know, playing like video games, but there's a lot of people that are into board games and there's family night and there's all of those things. So I really like this. I really like this a lot. And uh, this was submitted by Sarah. So Sarah, I want to thank you for submitting this. And uh, I'm just going to kind of give you my thoughts right out of the box as far as what I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, like my, my feedback is if I was to come here or if I was even doing some consulting, what I would say, I love the, the banner. Okay. The banner. Now, sometimes people don't have a banner. They don't have a banner at all. Uh, there's a place to put a banner guys, put it in there. All right. Because it represents your storefront. Imagine you're, uh, you know, you have a brick and mortar business where you have a storefront. That's your, that's your billboard. That's your sign to let people know like what you are and you know, like who it serves. So I think this is really, really important. Now, is this the best, you know, banner I've ever seen? No, I think we have room to improve. Uh, the one thing I would say is like having this clock and then the pillow here together. Uh, it's, it's a little much. Uh, and then this over here, I like the two end pieces, but in the center here, I would probably condense that and just maybe add one more. I'd probably add people actually playing a game. I think that would make it nice because then it would show like people sitting down and playing a game. It could be like a chess match. It could be Dungeons and Dragons. It could be any of that stuff. Now, I will say this too. One thing that came to mind is when you are selling uh, for like Dungeons and Dragons or any of the other popular names, we have to be careful because there are trademark uh, things in place there. So we have to be careful with that. I don't know all of the rules and all of the things that you can and can't do. All I am saying is it's definitely something that could get flagged or someone could turn you in. So you have to be careful there. I'm not saying you can't sell. I'm just saying you are not going to be able to put in there Dungeons and Dragons and things like that. You just aren't. Um, so let's just kind of keep going here. Uh, okay. So we're looking at on the left-hand side and if you guys are listening, I'm going to explain what I'm seeing. We're, uh, we're seeing where it says boards, dwarves, and dragons. It is their profile or their, sorry, it's their logo area. It's a little square image where you see that on the left-hand side. And it basically just says boards, dwarves, and dragons. And it's got a little figure there. I believe that's a dwarf or dwarf, I think is what they call them. Um, and then over here we have a picture and it looks like Sarah and her significant other potentially. I don't know. Um, but I like that because it's a picture of a face. If you are not putting a face in the profile area, please do that. People want to connect to the shop owner. It's really, really important, especially on Etsy. All right. So the announcement section is filled out. This is another area that I see a lot of times people don't fill out. This is filled out. Hi there, fellow board game and TTRPG friends. I don't know what that means, but if you're one of them, you probably 
know what it means. Um, welcome to our Boards, Dwarves, and Dragons shop. Boards, Dwarves, and Dragons was born out of many years of loving and collecting all things board games. I'm not going to read this entire thing, but I love how it's not just get 20% off your first purchase. I like this because it's an announcement, but it's also, it's the first thing that people are seeing and reading if they've came to your shop. All right, let's get into the products, which is probably one of the more important parts here, okay? So if we're looking on the left-hand side, we have categories, and it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories. That's fine. And we have signs, uh, comma, game room, comma, decor. Then we have game room decor, game accessories, game apparel, RPG accessories. One thing I would say here is I always would want to try to use keywords in here. So instead of it being just game room decor, maybe it's board game or something like that. If there's something uh, in particular. Uh, so just always try to use whatever you're trying to target in here. All right. Uh, again, if it was woodworking, it would be woodworking and then fill in the blank, right? You want to try to include that, uh, that keyword. And in this case, I believe it is uh, board games, right? I don't know that I would put dwarves in there or dragons or things like that. Maybe, uh, maybe you could put something in here. Um, but right now, first glance, I just think that it's very generic. And I think we have to uh, really use this space as long tail keywords where people can also find the categories because categories are also indexed. And then just looking at the products. So let's just take a quick peek here. I'm just scrolling through and I'm seeing t-shirts. I'm seeing some of them on the mock-ups are on people. Some of them are just a flat t-shirt on a white background. Uh, I see a doormat. I see some signs that are hanging up. Some of them are cut off because it doesn't look like the thumbnail when it was created was the, the right size. Uh, so I think that it needs some cleanup as far as like, if we're looking at the mugs, uh, those look good. Cause we can see the entire mug. The shirts look very generic with the model and then just a white background. I think I would mix that up. I can't read the shirt. I think on something like that, people want to be able to read it. Uh, but it does look like we're kind of going all over the place as far as what we're targeting. And here's what I mean. And the other thing I'm noticing here is, is we don't really have a targeted keyword in these titles other than white ceramic mug. All right. So white ceramic mug, that doesn't tell me that this is for, I don't know, a board game or game night or something like that, right? Like whatever people are searching for, we need that in here. Now it's going to be tricky if we're trying to go after a board game that's popular like Dungeons and Dragons or, uh, you know, I don't know if chess would be, I don't know if that's generic enough. Chris, you might know some of the stuff on that, like checkers or chess or any of that stuff. I don't know if we can use that in there. I mean, it's kind of like baseball. I think you can use baseball. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I'd like your feedback on that here in a second, but before we do, I'm just looking unisex, heavy cotton tea, uh, hardcover journal, Matt, uh, gallery canvas wraps. One thing that we need to do here, Sarah, is we need to clean up these listings. We need to get these listings to where they're optimized. They're not optimized. It, they're optimized for a very, very generic thing, a beach towel, right? Um, so we want to make sure that we, the very first thing that we need to see in this very limited amount of space is the keyword that we are targeting. So huge takeaway there for that. Um, so before we get into more product stuff, Chris, is there anything you wanted to say there on trademark type stuff and just board games in general? Cause I know that you're kind of, uh, you know, you're into this a stuff. lot nerdier than you is that? Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but yes, you're right. You were thinking it. I saw it on your face. Uh, and if you guys are listening to the audio of this and didn't see his judgmental face before I made that <laughs> comment, you need to go over to the YouTube and, uh, and to watch it. And I just also called it the YouTube, which is the most boomer the thing ever. Um, a couple things. First of all, congrats to Sarah and to her other person in the photo. I assume it's a significant other and not just a random stranger. Uh, they have been up a little over a month and have gotten that first cha-ching, which is really awesome. Second, they are proof that you can do this from literally anywhere. Scott, I don't know if you saw the location on this. It's Panaka, Nevada or Panica, depending on who you ask, population of about 800 people in the part of Nevada where there is absolutely nothing. So if you can do this from there, you can do this from literally anywhere. It's a question we get all the time. Hey, can I do this from here? Can I do this from there? Yes, you absolutely can, right? Third, um, you you brought up Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons specifically, and they actually got a lot got in a lot of trouble for this in the last few weeks. Um, 
has an open license, meaning you are able to use their trademarked materials to create derivative works. That's not usually the case with stuff like this, right? Interesting. Uh, and they actually changed it where if you were making over three quarters of a million dollars a year using their stuff, then you were going to have to pay them a royalty. They got in a whole bunch of trouble with the TTRPG community, um, the tabletop role-playing game community, because wow. there's a bunch of people that Just knew that build businesses off of this. I know things. I drink tea and I know things, Scott. Um, <laughs> not not anything useful, but in this case, it happens to apply. The biggest thing that I'm noticing from a, an optimization to the store perspective is exactly the point you just pointed out. And Scott, if you can bring the full screen up, I know uh, <laughs> I'm making you edit on the fly here, but if you scroll down and just look at the first beach towel example here, right? Scott, you may not know what a meeple is. A meeple is like anytime you're playing a board game and it's like a human looking figurine, right? Um, that's a meeple. Okay. So they have a journal for that. But if, if what we are selling is something that would interest the tabletop game community, right? They're not going to be searching journal. And then that they're going to type in meeple journal or mm -hmm. D 20, which is the, that's the, the dice, the die that you use for dungeons and dragons. Scott, it's a 20, 20 sided die. Um, okay. that's what's on the beach towel, right? So we should lead that product description with the thing that our community is going mm -hmm. to search. Um, and it's, it's just flipping that around and we can still say D 20 dice beach towel, which I believe just looking at the, the little clip here is yeah. the rest of that title after the first guys, that vertical line is called a pipe. Um, yeah, this right here. uh, <laughs> that first spacer thing, uh, D 20 beach towel, right? I would just make that the main portion so that when somebody is, yeah, D D 20 dice beach towel, right? Mm -hmm. Just make that the first thing. People just generically searching for beach towel are not likely our community. People typing in D20 dice or D20 into Etsy are nerdy enough, right, that they are looking for Dungeons and Dragons stuff directly. Those are going to be, be the people who we really want to target. We don't want to send a bunch of unqualified random people to that beach towel because they're not going to buy. And that's actually going to hurt us over the long term. So if we can scale that back, get a little bit more specific with that first search term, it's going to help us out long term. Yeah, I like it. I love it that Chris is knowledgeable on this whole game, board game. And I'm not talking checkers either. I'm talking like these, you know, Dungeons and Dragons and all of that stuff. So, yeah. So, Chris is uh, very knowledgeable in this space. So, very good that we pulled this one up to uh, to kind of deep dive. So, here, here's what I want to do, though, on this one. Okay, so I just clicked into one of the listings, all right? And it's the beach towel. And then there's a uh, like Chris said, it's a pipe, like kind of, that kind of separates it. You can use commas, you can use, uh, you know, uh, what is it? The, uh, uh, hyphen, you can use any of that stuff. Uh, some people say like one works better than the other for SEO. I don't think it really matters. Um, D 20 dice, beach towel, RPG gift, dungeon master gift, D and D gift, DM gift, uh, GM gift. Some is capital. Some is not capital clean. I would clean this up. All right. I would number one, I would make sure that we're doing the keyword research to see what one is the most searched for. I would lead with that and I'd fill the other ones in. The other thing I'm noticing is once again, the image, it's just okay. Like again, guys, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Like if we were going to do this and uh, you were going to pay me to do an audit for you, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest, right? Like we got to get better images. Like this image just looks like something that we just kind of slapped together real quick. This is representing your product. So show that, I mean, there's mock-ups that you could show this beach towel being draped over something where it looks more real, right? Not just an image. So here there's only two images in this. So number one, we need to clean up the listing. We need to optimize it for the search that we're going after. We need to fill out or fill in all of these image placements, which there's only two right now. We should have at least 10 images in here uh, of just different angles, uh, you know, Maybe a close up, maybe showing the fabric, the stitching, like anything that you can add to it, you want to add to it. Uh, so that's definitely something that I would want to clean up. I am not going to have time to go through all of these listings, um, but that's just an observation. Um, okay, so we're going to move on, but I did want to pull this up because when I was doing a little bit of pre, uh, a little bit of like, uh, you know, I was trying to get ready for this. I wanted to make sure that I had some stuff kind of lined up. I went into game night 
because game night is a big thing for a lot of families. Like, Hey, let's have game night. Let's do family night. It's like, okay, cool. Well, there's actually people searching for things for game night. So I just pulled this up and I mean, we have a game night tote bag. Uh, we have invitations that you can send out and invitations could be for maybe a birthday party, but it also could be like, Hey, we're going to have a party. And then someone wants to get cute with it and send out, you know, game night invitations to, uh, to their friends and family. Uh, then let's see here. I'm just scrolling. There's that tote bag again. Uh, we have a shirt game night. I'm here because someone has to win. It's a funny, cute shirt, right? Uh, let's see here. Tears of all the people I've beaten on game night in all caps. Uh, so there's another one. Uh, let's see here. Another bag. It looks like here's another little saying. Here's a candle, new board game smell, uh, with a candle, uh, game night host. Uh, is it game night yet? So I don't know if any of these are selling right now, but all I'm saying is, is there's a lot of things just for game night. Now we didn't get into specifics of the game. Like you said, dungeons and dragons and things like that. We just need to make sure that we're, we're looking into the trademark stuff. Cause that that's where it could get a little, that, that it, it could get a little legal there and we don't want anything, anything really to happen there. So that's what I found there. Uh, so again, just some ideas. I think it's a great start. I think it's a great niche. And this is a, this is an example guys. I, I want to point this out because I, I think I looked at over 40, uh, people that submitted to have one of, one of their uh, one of their shops in, in for this audit. And out of those, I would say there was at least, at least 25, maybe 30 that were, everyone's just going to be a gift giving funny humor type shop, right? Guys, I, I have to tell you, if you're doing that, and this is the reason why we wanted to share this publicly and put this on air and all that stuff. If you are doing that right now, if your shop is like humor, just any niche humor and gifts, you have more competition than if you would just go into the wedding niche, to be honest with you. Like everyone is trying to do that. We don't want to do that. All right. So this is a perfect example of how we can carve out a niche, but we can also do some niche stacking. And if you guys missed that video, I'll link it up in the comments at some point, or I'll drop it in the uh, description on YouTube once we finish this up. But we have a video that we did on niche stacking. And what that basically is, is where we're taking things like, yes, it's games, it's board games, but we're also talking about Dungeons and Dragons. We're talking about chess. We're talking about checkers. We're talking about any other board games. That's how we're kind of going into these other sub niches and really stacking on these niches so we can go with a bigger demand. Um, so Chris, anything else before we move on to the next shop? <clears throat> no, just the, the same quick disclaimer that you just gave, right? Adding an adjective to something that's not already a niche doesn't make it a niche, right? The criteria that you and I like to use is a niche is something people identify as or like to do while gift giving, right? Or like gifts can kind of skirt that a little bit. Simply adding the word funny to the beginning of that doesn't make it a niche and actually is a great way to run into even more competition. Um, plus funny is really subjective. And so <laughs> rather than making stuff for all fishermen, we're just gonna be a funny fisherman that can lead us down the wrong path. So I would, I would try to avoid that if you can uh, as you go through the niche selection process. And Scott, people should be able to find that video uh, on niche stacking at brandcreators.com forward slash stack. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, that, that that's a good one for you guys to really kind of go through that. It's a shorter video. It's probably like 10, 12 minutes long, and it'll kind of walk you through what that process looks like. So guys, do me a favor. If you are listening to this or watching this on YouTube and you've gotten value so far, do me a favor, smash that like button and give it a little bit of love. That's what kind of keeps us going and uh, being able to help it spread a little bit and get shared with other people that could use this information. So we'd really appreciate that if you would do that. So that'd be awesome. Uh, the other thing I would say too, is before we move on, if you guys are brand spanking new, I would definitely encourage you to go to this free resource that we have. And it is the 64 K roadmap and I'm looking for it here and I had it and now I don't see it. Uh, Chris, if you could put that up, I believe it is brandcreators.com forward slash 64 K. So if you go to brandcreators.com forward slash 64 K, that'll give you a guide and a video that I walk you through what myself and my wife 
uh, did last 12 months and building it up. And really the last four months uh, was probably a good 40,000 of that. And now we're going to ramp it up for 2023, but it's a roadmap that really shows you the process that we now have kind of learned through doing it. And really the five part process to building out a brand on Etsy, but yet where it's not just a garage sale style or a general store as everyone else is really teaching out there. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out, go to brandcreators.com forward slash 64K. It's totally free. Uh, go ahead and grab it, go through it. And uh, this way here, it, at least it'll give you the framework to move forward. And it does start with picking the right niche. All right. So moving on, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are looking at some cute little, uh, cute little things here. We're looking at, and if you guys are listening, you're like, what are you talking about? It's called printable art. Uh, hang with our, our hang with heart is what it is. So it's printable art is not the name. That's what it is. It's hanging with heart is the name high quality printable art for your heart. Love it. Uh, it looks like from Australia as well. So awesome. Uh, so it looks like they've had six sales so far and they've got 44 listings live right now. All right. So the very first thing I'm seeing is the banner. The banner is very colorful. It's very clean. On the left-hand side, we have a cute little dog. On the right-hand side, we've got a cute little character of, of, of uh, some kind, but it looks like a Spider-Man type of little character. My only thing is there is whenever I see something like that, I'm like, uh, are we going to get in trouble with you know, like, uh, what is it? Marvel or whatever, whoever does, you know, uh, any, any Spider-Man or Batman or any of that stuff, I'd be careful with that one, uh, personally. Um, but it doesn't say Spider-Man, but it looks like Spider-Man. It looks like a little tiny little character that looks like he's dressed up like Spider-Man. It's cute, but I don't know if I would use that. Uh, so I do love the logo. The logo again is, uh, it's red, but it's got a really cool looking design. It does look artistic. Um, the banner also has some pencils, and um, it looks like some drawing things. So this way here, you know that it's it's an art type site, which is fine. And I see this a lot, guys. I see people launching art sites, right? Art where you can hang it on the wall. And that's great. But here's where my problem comes in with this. If I'm selling a piece of art and everyone else is selling art, then it's just really, okay, I like that one. I don't like this one. But how are they finding your art and what are they using the art for? Ah, that's what we need to think about. What are we using the art for? And also what kind of art are we looking for? There's all different kinds of art or there's all different kinds of decor, right? Because this is technically yes, art, but it's hang with heart. So now what's good about that and uh, it's uh, actually Matt. So Matt, shout out to you. Uh, thanks for allowing us to do this by the way. Uh, but what you, what you've done here is you've allowed yourself to not just be art. It's hang with heart. So really things that we can hang that is with the heart, right. That make you feel good. We can, we can put up, right? So I love that. So I'm going to just scroll through here a little bit and I'm looking at the categories. I'm going to read the categories, digital fine art sets, digital farm animals, digital baby puppies, digital baby dinosaurs, digital superheroes, digital cold animals, and abstract artwork, okay? And then we have a, a bunch of very simple but very cool looking uh, just different types of animals or figures, all right? Now, I like all this, and this all looks good. Again, I would be careful. I don't know. Like, we have one here that looks like Wonder Woman, so that one there, eh, probably not good. Uh, we could get in trouble with that. We have, you know, this one here looks like a character from, I don't know what one that would be. Uh, I can, oh, uh, what's the other one? Um, oh gosh, my son it's was Ant -Man based on the title. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but things like this, we have a, uh, looks like a baby horse. Okay. Uh, we have that, we have here a King Charles puppy. Okay. Which is cool. We have a German shepherd puppy. Now those are cool and all, but again, someone has to be searching for German shepherd puppy that they want to hang as a watercolor painting or whatever, right? Probably not a ton of search. What I would like to see, and I did a little bit of research here is I would like to see you go after a niche, right? And then create things that you hang 
for that niche. Okay. So an example is this right here, and I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the screen here. So this here was Safari nursery prints. Now these look very similar to something you could create. There's a giraffe, there's an elephant. looks like there's a uh, tiger, uh, looks like a zebra. You get the idea, right? There's all of these different Safari, uh, animals. Okay. And so, and it, it's really simple. So I'm looking at the draft and it says stand tall over top of it. Then the elephant be kind, right? Um, so my point is this, people are searching for nursery prints. People are probably also searching for Safari nursery prints. All right. And then if I look at this title, I can see nursery decor, nursery wall art, baby animal prints for nursery, baby animal prints. Okay. So that makes me say, maybe what we do is we create a whole bunch of different pieces that could be hung in a baby's nursery. Now we've entered the baby niche. Does that mean we have to only be in the baby niche? No, because your shop is things that you hang, right? That's what it is. But this is where I would go. And if I'm looking here now, I look at this here. Uh, I just pulled up another screen where I ran Everbee. And Everbee shows me that uh, monthly revenue is $7,068. 76 monthly sales. Total sales is 3,119. And total favorites is 20,198. If you guys are brand new and you don't, know what that means or why I get excited about favorites. It's a vote. People raise their hand by clicking on that to say, Oh, I like that. So it shows there's demand. It's been live for three years and two months. And I can see the tags here, safari animals, nursery prints, pretty much a lot of the things that are inside of that title. The other thing I noticed here is baby shower gift or, uh, let's see, uh, prints for nursery. So there's some things in here that weren't in the title, but that's where I would probably go, right? Like find something that you can then enter with your art prints, right? And then we can, instead of it just being these framed pieces, it could be on pillows. It could be on blankets. Now we can start to build out our product line and not just offer digital prints. All right, Chris, anything you wanted to say on this one? Uh, a couple of things. First, uh, I think you nailed it. The, the biggest issue that I see with this is it is a little too open. And that's one of the, the problems with like art, right? As you say, like I'm an artist, but just because you like a specific style of art doesn't mean that you care about anybody else's art or style, right? So we need to pick where this, where and how this is going to be used rather than hoping that somebody searches for art. So really niching down into a niche, whether it's the baby niche or the nerd decor niche or whatever it is, right? Baby decor, obviously. Um, I think that's good. And then the second thing, and I wrote this down with three exclamation points, Scott, and I, I didn't dig through the store, but based on the title of the store, um, we need to add physical stuff, right? Yeah. If we already have the digital products, there are zero reasons that I can think of to not also add a printable version of that uh, or a, a, an already printed version of that to the store, right? We have the files. You already did the mockups and the mockups are beautiful, right? add the option to get that physically printed and shipped to me. I don't want to have to go find the frame for this. I don't want to have to find a, I don't even own a printer, right? Like I, I wouldn't be able to take advantage of this. So I'd have to buy it and then send it to a printer myself, offer them the option to be able to get these things as a physical product. It'll take you all of five minutes to take that design and create it as a physical thing. Um, and then you get actually higher margins as well. Yes, you made $5 when somebody buys this because it's a digital thing, but we could sell the already printed version of this for 40, 50, 60, $80, depending on the size that they want it printed. And it takes all of five minutes worth of effort to be able to add much higher revenue and honestly higher margins, not from a percentage pers perspective, but from a dollar perspective to this store and really start to build this. Um, so I would encourage anybody that's selling digital only, unless it's like a template, right, that they need, uh, or even a mock-up, right? If you're selling mock-ups, you can't really do printouts of those things. Um, but anything like this, if you have a digital art store, offer the physical print on demand version. You don't have to have inventory, you don't have to do any of that. Go to any of the print on demand providers and you'll find really high quality options for different sizes and styles. It's going to help you rank better and it's going to help with the conversion rate. 
Yeah, I'm actually just scrolling through here. I I uh, went into the one of the listings, and I mean, thumbs up to like the listing itself, right? Like all the image placements are filled in, all different uh, ways of looking at the picture in different rooms to give people like if that might have a nursery, or some people might put it in. Uh, just a kid's room. And, you know, so you can kind of get a feel for it. You could also see it up close. You can see it framed all of these different things that you're able to do uh, with the print. You're, you're showing that off. So I really like that. And then I look at the listing here and it's uh, again, we're, we're leading with uh, you know, not the keyword that we really should be leading with. So that's where I would go with that. Um, as far as the description, it looks like it's well written and it's filled out and it's giving all of the different aspect ratios and all of that stuff. So that all looks good. So really, I just think it's a targeting and it's really like getting really focused on that niche and then uh, and then going from there, because obviously we can see here just by looking at these numbers, like there's definitely, definitely demand here for this, you know, and I'm looking at this number too, just to kind of point this out. So $7,068 is what it says an estimated monthly revenue. But the one thing I always like to look at too, guys, is this here, they're, they're running a sale 70% off. So that's not technically what they're making now. It could be because if I select in here, you can probably see if I do select different sizes, that price will go up. But I always like to think about it as like the worst case scenario. And that's like 70% off. Bottom line is it's still selling, right? So if we look at, let me go back here, it sold 76 of them, right? So do 76 times 26, 27 bucks, and then whatever they're, you know, if it's not a digital item, which this is, I believe, um, you know, cause I think that they actually sell this digitally and they also offer it framed, not quite sure, but anyway, I just wanted to point that out. All right, Chris, are we ready to move on to the, the next one? One, one question about this, uh, because yeah. we were talking about digital versus print on demand, Scott, if you have something like this, would you create a separate listing for the physical product, um, with the same design on it, or would you offer them the option of digital or canvas, you know, framed, whatever, all in one place. I think that's, that's up to the individual. You know what I mean? Like, I think if you wanted to put two listings up, you could, cause they are different. One is digital and one, one is not. Um, but I would probably consolidate it, put it in one. So you have less to, to manage. Um, but you could always run it as a test too. You know what I mean? And just try it. But yeah, I, I would probably try to keep everything in one listing personally. At, at the very least, I think you would want all of the different physical variations uh, in one listing and then digital separately. Um, mm -hmm. I personally would probably try to keep that in one place if you can. Yeah. Um, and somebody had just asked, Scott, I've seen that plus sign on a bunch of different Etsy listings. How do I get that? That would just involve you having variations, right? If you have variations at different price points, yeah. Etsy will show that it's $14 or more because mm -hmm. they don't know which variation you're going to pick. And they don't exactly. change that, that pricing for every single person based on their buyer history. So it just says X dollars plus. Yep. Yeah. And I threw this up on the screen because I know some people will be asking that are new, uh, Scott, what tool were you using and how did you get those, those numbers? Uh, the tool is called Everbee and, uh, we're actually, uh, we are an affiliate forum because we use them every day and, you know, I definitely stand behind them. Uh, if you wanted to buy us a cup of coffee, you could by going to uh, brandcreators.com forward slash everbe, but you'll only buy us a cup of coffee if you decide to upgrade from the free plan. There is a free plan. You can actually try it for free. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, giving that a shot and even just playing around with it. It's it's fun to kind of dig in to see some of those numbers and to see the favorites and to see how many sales are doing per month. But this is really the tool that I use every single day because it's all about demand for me. It's all about like, what is the potential for this uh, versus just kind of shooting blind, right? So if you're interested in checking that out, brandcreators.com forward slash everbe and you can do so. All right, let's move on. We got a bunch more to cover here and we got to get rolling. Here we go. All right. So the next one here is from Jason. Now this one here is not your print on demand. It is a digital item, which I love by the way. Uh, and it's funny because my wife and I have been recently talking about uh, adding some digital elements or different products to our product line. Um, but this is really, really cool. And here's why, all right? It's called Pro Motion Mockups. And what this is for is for you and I. It's for an Etsy seller. And so what they've done is they they 
because they're sellers themselves, they seen that there's, there's a little bit of a problem for people not creating videos and putting them in their listings because they don't know how. And so what Jason did him and his wife is they decided to buy the items, set it all up, create some nice things that go around it on the table, sliding in and out. And you'll see here in a second and, uh, and creating those for us to buy as a marketing tool, which I think is brilliant. Um, so the reason why I wanted to share this though, is number one, I think it's a great idea. You should probably check it out. But number two is you always want to look at your niche and see, is there something that I can help uh, solve, right? Or help with them getting a result. So we always talk about like gift giving, because that's really what Etsy is about. But if you are someone like Jason that might have a, 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 maybe a skill set in video uh, and can create something like this, why not? Right. And he enjoys doing it. His wife enjoys doing it. So yes, I think it's a great, a great idea. That's why I wanted to share it with you because sometimes you just got to think outside the box. Um, so this here, it's called pro motion mockups. I love the banner. It shows, you know, just different, different things, right? Like your design here shows a video play button. Um, obviously it shows the shirt and a cool little graphic. Um, then we have the pro motion mockups, very simple, but a cool little logo. Uh, that goes in the little square box there. Uh, video mockups for print on demand, beautiful. And guys, the other thing I want to point out here is whenever we're doing this, okay, when we're looking at this here and what I'm showing you guys, if you're listening, is underneath the the name of the shop, Pro Motion Mockups, there's a little subtitle that you can put in there. And that also can get picked up by the search engines, okay? So we want to make sure that we are smart about that. So he is selling video mockups. So mockups is a big keyword in Etsy and print on demand is. So he's using that space very, very well. So that's awesome. The announcement, new store launch. We're so happy to provide our video mockups for your print on demand selling needs. I like that. We need to beef that up a little bit, Jason. Jason, I would put there the story or why you decided to create this. Uh, it solved your problem. You probably scratched your own itch. Let people know about it. If you've been selling on Etsy before, tell them that you started selling and this is something that you were you you couldn't find and whatever it is, right? Tell your story there. Um, we have a picture of Jason here, which I love. It's a perfect close-up picture. Um, so that's great. We get to see that. And then in the categories, this is going to be obviously built out. And I know that Jason said this is fairly new. I mean, it was um, probably launched within the last month, I think. Actually, we'll probably be able to see here in a second. But the one thing that Jason, you're going to have, you know, not problems with, but it's going to slow you down a little bit is you have to get the items, right? Bella canvas, um, 3001 mock-up. So you're getting like a specific like item. So you got to buy the items. You got to get the items. You got to set it up. You got to shoot the video. You got to do all that stuff. And that's what a lot of people don't realize with digital products. Yes. It's like the Holy grail. But the same breath is there's a lot of work that goes into creating the digital item. Um, and in this case, there's a lot of pieces to it. He's got to buy the parts, put it in. So for $8.50 and you're a seller, that's a no-brainer, right? So I love the thumbnails. These are all looking good. Uh, video mock-up, Bella, Canvas, uh, whatever that number was again. So I like that. I think that's all good. Then we have St. Patrick's Day mock-up. That's good. See how he's putting keywords in the very front. So people that are looking for St. Patrick's Day mock-ups, it's going to come up. Uh, now, if he was just going to be creating mock-ups, it's very saturated. Like so many people are doing that now, but with video, not everyone's doing that. So you see, got in a little early. It might do well. Who knows? But you can see this one playing right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hold it over there so you can see it. Actually, let me click into one of these listings and I'll play it for you. Uh, it's this one right here. And so guys, if you were listening, I'm just going to kind of give you the play by play. You had a beach towel that slid in. You got a beach bag that slid in. You got some sandals that slid in and then a seashell and then some sunglasses. And then you have the shirt and then your design goes on the shirt. It's pretty cool. I like it. So uh, that all looks great. Chris, what do you think about this product? First of all, Jason is in uh, in the YouTube chat hanging out with us. He said, nice. I started last week, right? Oh, so God. it is, it is, it literally is a new shop. And that's why he put new shop in the announcement. But Scott, the, the biggest thing, and I, I would take a look at this um, immediately. And since he's hanging out with us, this may be useful. The announcement, right? Yeah. 
if I'm looking for mockups, this is a case uh, where I'm definitely coming to see all of the mockups that he has if I find one, right? I'm coming immediately to the store. You make a very bold claim in the banner, Jason. You say, boost sales with video mockups. How do they do that, right? If mm -hmm. I see that banner and you give me that explanation in that uh, the, the store announcement, that's going to make it much, much easier for me to understand how this makes an impact on my store and on my sales. Uh, and we have a bunch of people in the chat saying, I'm gonna have to hit Jason up because I need some of these. And Scott, before you and I got on, we were having this conversation. And even though a lot of Etsy shoppers don't necessarily rely on videos the same way that rely on photos to understand what the product is, having something like a video mockup where it starts to move, right? If, if that shows up in the search result for that product, that's gonna help your product stand out right? Which means just like anything else, having a star seller rating, running an ad, right? Having a better thumbnail photo, anything that makes you stand out makes it more likely that somebody's going to click on the listing. So Jason, the biggest thing that I would say, first of all, awesome idea. It's an, it's a very interesting niche, uh, right? Your niche really is people selling on print on demand. Um, but let's see if we can clean that up. Let's see if we can address that a little bit. And then I think we're going to be well on our way. Yeah, uh, real quick. Um, and actually, it's funny. Uh, I was actually putting this putting this together here before uh, before you uh, started talking there. But so what we're doing also, guys, like just to kind of give you guys a heads up and calling like a little bit of a timeout. Um, but like Chris was talking about, like, how important is the video and a lot of times people are like, do I really need a video? Does it really make that much of an impact? Well, here's the deal. We don't really know, okay? But what we do know is when people are scrolling, we know that that catches eye, right? It catches my eye and I'm guaranteeing if you're scrolling and you see something play, um, then yeah, it's it's going to catch your attention. And that's all we're talking about. It's just like scroll, catch tension. What is it? Oh, different. Okay, cool. Click in. Does the video help you convert in this product? It probably will because you are selling a motion graphic in a sense, right? But if you're talking about just like your handbag or if you're talking about a piece of art, does that matter? Probably not as much, but here's the deal. We're actually surveying people right now. We're actually surveying Etsy buyers and we're creating, a, it's a survey that actually you can take as well because I'm sure if you're a seller, you're a buyer. So Chris, I just put together on the fly here I don't know if it's done yet, but I was going to basically put it in here where you guys can, I don't know where it went now. Can, can you put, can, can you create that Chris, uh, brandcreators.com forward slash survey. And if you go there, you can fill out that survey. Don't do it right now. Cause we're not done with this. But if you guys are listening to this on the podcast, if it hasn't been already kind of like finished, go there, brandcreators.com forward slash survey. And what we're doing guys is we're collecting data with questions of what impacted you to buy, right? And we ask about that in video. Did, did video, how much do you look at video to help you make a buying decision? So this way here, what we can do as sellers is we can look at the, the different, I guess, conversion mechanisms and see, do they really make a difference? Should I be focusing on them? How important is a good photo? Like how important is a review? Is it really that important? How's price? What about discounts? Like, does what, what if I don't offer free shipping? So all of those questions we're asking to real buyers and we're going to have the data. So stick around with us because we're going to be sharing that, not in this episode, obviously, but when we collect it all and we're going to probably write a big blog post about it. We're going to do a YouTube video about it and I'll be sharing it on the email list as well. So make sure that you, that you do that because then you'll be able to see the data and it'll also help you when you're optimizing your listings. So definitely do that for us if you wouldn't mind. All right, cool. Moving on, let's get back to it. Uh, so yes, so I think, uh, Jason, I think it's a great product. Um, I'm sure you're gonna get some sales now from, from everyone here. And here's one thing I would say, uh, Jason, if you and I were having that cup of coffee together, and sitting down and, and kind of brainstorming business, uh, you really just need to target the Etsy seller, which is us, right? And the way that you can do that also is to basically give one of these away and start building your email list, right? Chris and I are big on email list building, whether you know we're building it for brand creators or we're building it for our Etsy shop, we're very, very big on it. 
because this way here, you can let people know, Hey, I've got a new one or, Hey, what, you know, what style would you like next? And then you can start to build from that. And then we go outside of just Etsy. Um, so definitely something that I would consider doing. Um, and Scott, I know that once do, you build, go ahead. Do me a favor and scroll down really fast. I'm just curious. Uh, so Jason, I don't know if you've gotten any sales out of this, but you got a whole bunch of new followers because I just pulled you up on my side and my number is a lot higher than the number on Scott's side. So I thought that was interesting. Um, That's awesome. You know, th this is the right group for this, Scott. And it's not what we would traditionally call a niche, but you are in a unique space. You have something that's unique to the people. And that's like the dictionary definition of a niche, right? Is you've carved this out. And if we can double down on that, I think you got something here. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to leave it at that. We're not going to spend too much time on that one, but Jason, uh, great job. Love it. And uh, yeah, keep it going and keep us posted. And uh, who knows, maybe one day you'll have an affiliate program and we can join it and we can send people your way. Uh, I think people are going to go there right now without, uh, without even hesitating. So I think it's awesome. So cool. All right, let's move on. We've got another one here and let's see. I already looked at that. Okay, here we are. This is, uh, it looks like Lee or Leah. Um, it looks like, okay. Eastman custom designs. Now I wanted to share this one, uh, because there are some things that I see that a lot of people are doing. And I want to point these out and I'm not picking on Leah at all. Um, I, I, I am going to point out what I'm seeing. And I think that it's also because probably confusion as far as, and probably like, oh, maybe I should just jump over here and go into this, you know, niche because everyone else is doing it and it looks like it's selling. And then I'm going to bounce over here and then I'm going to bounce over here. Right. So let's take a look at, let's start with the banner. The banner is very clean. Um, I think we need more going on with it though, right? Eastman custom designs. I have no idea what that is other than you do custom designs. So you're just a custom design company, right? So whatever it is that you're going to focus on, you want to make that known in that banner. Okay. Like we just looked at Jason's. We know he's about video mockups. It's all right there. Right. So we want to make sure we looked at the one before in the very beginning about the board games. We know immediately we go there. It's about board games. Right. So we immediately want to know who it is that this is for when I walk into that store. All right. Now, the one thing I noticed here, okay, is we have the uh, banner, which is a graphic with the logo. Then the logo is the same as the banner. And then the profile picture is the same as the logo. So this just looks like it was just kind of put together because that's what you had. And uh, you didn't really take the time to build out the banner, make the banner better, right? And so I would encourage you to do that. Now, is that going to make you have sales overnight? No, but we're trying to build our storefront before we actually get people in the store. Now, it looks like you have 14 sales, which is great. But we want to treat this as, as it's a, it's a shop. It's a physical shop. Like I always tell people, imagine it's a brick and mortar store. All right. The other thing I noticed is right here, it says, uh, SVGs. If you guys don't know what they are, they're like, they're files. They're like uh, printables, uh, farmhouse upcycled, reclaimed wood decor AI. Now, right away, I was like, okay, SVGs, farmhouse, upcycled, reclaimed wood, and then decor, and then AI. So, like, why put AI in there? The only thing I can think of is because AI is like a hot topic right now, and people are, you know, into that, or they're kind of like surprised by it and maybe looking for AI stuff. But I don't think that needs to be in there. Uh, SVGs. I guess, but I would rather it be more in line with what you're going to be targeting for a niche. Like the SVG is, is not the niche. It's the product. If that's what you're selling. Um, I like farmhouse. If that's what you're going to go after, um, reclaimed wood, maybe. Right. So I might lean in those areas. So if I scroll down here, I'm looking at the categories once again, and I'll read these to anyone that's uh, listening on the podcast, uh, there's 106 items and it's living, living and family room, holidays, Christian and Bible verses, seasons, kitchen, bathroom, deck and man cave, nursery, kids, miscellaneous t-shirts, candles, right? So I don't really know 
uh, really what it is that you do create or who you serve. And then when I look at this, I'm looking at the featured items. I see a Yorkie in purse digital art. I look at Italian Greyhound digital art. I look at Italian, uh, Italian uh, Greyhound crew digital art. French Bulldog in bed digital art. Um, so I have all of these different things. Here's this one, Weathered Barn Gallery Canvas, like that. Uh, smells better than frosted. I uh, can't see what that's glass. Um, hand poured, 11 ounce candle, Italian Greyhound gifts. Italian. So I don't, it seems like it's all over the place. Just being honest. Um, and I see this happen a lot. So you're not alone uh, because here we are now we've got socks with the Italian Greyhound. So maybe you did some searching and you said, oh, Italian Greyhounds are searched for. So maybe we'll create a whole bunch of products around that. Okay. Uh, here's a pair of flip flops, pair of slippers. Then we, then we're here we are, we've got different dogs now, right? In, in, with coffee mugs. And let's see what else we got a horse. We've got a uh, beach towel with a, uh, looks like a baby calf on it. Uh, so I just see this as kind of being all over the place and there's no focus. So what I would like to see you do is focus on one niche and then create these different products for that niche. Right. And then I would take this category area and I would make sure that it's targeting who I'm targeting. Right. So that's kind of what I see. Chris, anything you want to say on this one here, I'll, I'll dig into one of the products too, and kind of take a look, but anything you wanted to say on this one? Yeah. The, the biggest thing that the biggest critique that I have is I have a little bit of whiplash, uh, <laughs> as we're yeah. scrolling through that, right. We're seeing, uh, what appears to be like AI generated Italian greyhounds dressed like an Italian type of art, uh, down to scented candles that don't have anything to do with greyhounds from the look of it. And then pictures of barns and, uh, Highland cows, which are really cool things, but aren't necessarily related. And so I think, I think there is potentially a way to, to resolve this. And it would be splitting this into like two or more different shops, right? If, if you really are passionate about all of these things, I don't think there's anything wrong with greyhounds, right? I think that's potentially a market. You'd have to go do the, the niche research there. And there's definitely nothing, nothing wrong with the like Western decor market, which is kind of the other angle that you're going after here with like the, the Highland cows and the pictures of the barns and some of those kinds of things. Um, I'm not sure where the, the Corgi mugs fit in, but if, if we kind of separated it that way, I think it would make a lot more sense to me. Um, and something like this would do great in like a Western decor shop or something like that. But right next to Italian greyhounds drinking cappuccino, it doesn't make as much sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Scott? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And so I just pulled up the Scottish Highland cattle wall art, right? So this would be in that Western theme, or this could be farmhouse. Even it could be any of the stuff that has to do with farmhouse reclaimed wood. This could go with that. It could, right? Um, but like we said, if you're doing a, you know, the Corgi uh, mug, probably not, you know, like why put that in there? It would, it, again, imagine you walked into the store and you heard the little bell go off as you walk through the door. And then you're like, okay, I instantly know what this shop is. Or do I walk in and go, oh, it's a general store or, oh, it's one of those shops that I pulled off when I was traveling and we went in to get something, a snack and there's all this different stuff, right? So I always like to focus on the niche. And then from there, building out from that with other products that could be related so we can increase the cart value. We have a customer that might come back again in the future, like all of those things, it just becomes easier. Um, and, and, and I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting to go in here and go, Oh, people are all creating uh, digital AI stuff now. So I'm just going to create a whole bunch of stuff and just start, you know, putting it up there and, Oh, people are doing coffee mugs on this here. And you know, they're doing it on the, the different dog breeds. I'm going to do that too. And like, I know it's tempting, but you have to, <laughs> you have to, uh, just kind of put the blinders on and not get distracted because that right there is what I would say. I don't want to say 90, but I'd say a good portion of people. I was going to say 90%. There, there's a lot of people that are doing this. They're just slapping up a shop and they're going to put a whole bunch of different products and a whole bunch of different niches. And they're just going to see, you know, and it just, to me, the amount of time it takes to do all that other stuff. If you would just focus on the niche and then finding products that serve that niche, it's going to be way easier 
and it's going to look better. People are going to have a better experience. And uh, then you're going to also start having a seasoned account that is in that niche, which is going to help you for ranking and all of that good stuff. So great job for getting it up. Great job on posting all these products. I mean, a hundred products. So congratulations. I bet you learned a lot. Um, but my first thing would be, we got to get direction. We got to get focus. And then once we do, we got to make this banner tell what our shop is. There's no announcement in here. So we don't even know like who you are, what you do, like why you did this shop. Um, you know what I mean? So like those things are important on Etsy. Those are really, really important. Anything else, Chris, before we move on to the next one? I would say the, the biggest thing here would be if we're niching this down, where do we start? Well, since we have a little bit of data, right? We've gotten 14 sales. What are those on, right? If we're trying to niche down, if we're trying to consolidate this stuff, chances are those kind of lean one direction or the other. And if it's truly 50-50, you can create a second shop and, and kind of split those down the middle. But if we're able to niche this down either into like the Western decor, the Italian Greyhound, um, or like more of a dog shop so you can keep the Corgi mugs and those kinds of things, um, that's probably the way to go. But the very first step in that would be to see what we've sold already to see what's the priority. And since we have 14 sales, it's not a ton of data, right? We don't have thousands of orders, but we do have a little bit of an idea of what's ranking and what's selling. So I would start with that and then, then figure out where you're going from there. Awesome. All right, cool. And guys, do me a favor. I'm going to ask for a little bit of love here. If you guys are getting value from this, do me a favor and smash the like button. If you are on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, um, drop a comment. Also, let us know. Is this cool? Is this something you'd like to see us do again? Um, because we do enjoy these and uh, we definitely would love to do more of these. So just let us know in the comments, but we do need to hear from you. So make sure that you do that. And uh, we will go ahead and show up with some more of these. I've got a bunch and I've got more people. If I post another post on, you know, or send an email out that we're going to do these audits, I guarantee I'm going to get a bunch. So if you want to, uh, to see more of these, let us know in the comments and uh, who knows, maybe we'll do another one. All right. Another round. All right. Let's uh, let's move on, Chris. Uh, this next one is, let's see here. I move on to there. Here we are. Fur and fig candle company light up your life with our handcrafted candles. All right. So love the name, by the way, the banner looks clean. It's simple. It does feel a little like a candle company, you know, although I don't see any candle on there, but I do feel like that natural. It's got a couple of pine trees. It looks like, so it looks pretty good. Okay, the font that selected looks like a candle company type of font. One thing I'm noticing though, and very similar to what we just looked at, is the same thing is in the profile. I'm sorry, the uh, the logo area where it says uh, fur and fig candle uh, company, and it says light up your life with handcrafted candles. So that's perfect. Um, but the the image itself is not a logo, right? It's it doesn't look different than the banner. So I always like to make that be a little bit different. And then, uh, it's Olivia. Uh, and it looks like, uh, just there's no image, right? It's just three pine trees. So we want to make sure that we do that. I don't see any announcement. So there's no like, welcome to my shop. Like, hi, I am, you know, and you know, it's like I said, hear that, hear that little bell. Someone just came through the front door and you come out and you greet them. You're like, Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Come on into our shop. We're a, a candle shop right? Um, so that's the very first thing that I see here and that I would want to make sure Then I see here we have, there's 90 products and it looks like there's 90, all of them are in underdogs and that's it. That's the only categories that we have here. So I'm not quite sure, um, if that's what we're going after. I'm also not sure if that's really something that's being searched for. So is there an English setter scented soy candle that people are searching for? Eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I'd have to do the research, but my gut tells me probably not. Um, so that it lo just looks like you took a candle, um, and basically just put the different dog breeds on it. Um, but you got to remember guys, like Etsy is a search engine. Like we have to realize that we need to find out what people are searching for. And then we want to be there when people search for it so they can buy from us, right? If people aren't searching for an English toy, Spaniel scented soy candle, um, how are, how are people going to find us? Right? So we, we want to make sure of that. So I did have some ideas, uh, because if you're just a candle company, which also kind of 
makes me question if that's the right decision because now we can only sell candles for the most part. Now that doesn't mean that a candle company can't send, sell a nice blanket that goes along with it because maybe you put the candle on and you create that mood and you have a blanket and a pillow, uh, you make a set, right? I think that you could probably do that. Um, but when we are labeled as a candle company, um, people are going to expect just candles or at least a lot of candles, right? So that doesn't mean we can't do the other, but it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But if we are going to go that direction, here was my thoughts. So I went and just did a search for uh, yoga candles and meditation candles. And I came up with this. All right. And this is in 20 plus people's carts and it's herbal intention candles. Okay. So these are, you can see here, abundance, love, right? So, and these even have like little stones in here or whatever those rocks. Um, so this here is more of an experience, right? Someone is buying this for an experience. They want to feel peace. They want to feel love. They want to relax. They want to maybe sit there and do their affirmations and things like that. Right. So that's who we're serving. But I did a search for yoga came up with this, right? Because yoga goes hand in hand with kind of like meditation and things like that. So you see the direction that I went immediately that if I was going to be a candle company, I would go down this road. And this also allows me to then sell other things. And I did a video, uh, I don't know, probably a month, month and a half ago where you see those sun catchers, I'd be another product that could go along with this because that's more of a relaxing and you see it and it feels good and all of that stuff. Right. Um, but check out the numbers on this one. Once again, I ran ever be on this and, uh, it's selling 195 of these candles every single month. And, uh, they did over 25, almost $2,600 in revenue and total sales is 6,886 and total favorites is 38,158. And the listing's been live for two years and 11 months, right? So the keywords that they're targeting in their, uh, in their tags are abundance, crystals, energy, healing, intention, candle. Uh, so all of these different things I'd be looking at and going, okay, can I create more for this target niche? Now that doesn't mean I can only go here, but this is a good start because now you see, I've got direction. I've got an angle of what I'm going to, or where I'm going to go into this saturated candle business, right? So that's what I would, uh, say would be a better option here, uh, is really coming up and finding that niche. And if you guys are watching this or listening to this, I want you to always be thinking about your your Etsy shop is like, who does it serve? Who is searching for what you have? That's really what you need to be asking yourself. Who is searching for what you have? And then from there, see if your product is something that actually someone would buy. And then we kind of move forward from there. And we're always building out, building on that. Um, and then that means that we can also do some niche stacking as we, as we call it, where we're just taking some other sub niches. So this would be maybe yoga. Then there could be meditation and we can keep going down the line. Um, Chris, anything you wanted to say on this one? A couple of things really fast. I think we missed the world's greatest opportunity for a pun. If we are a dog-based candle store, it should be fur, F-U-R, not F-I-R is in the tree, fur is in dog fur, right? Uh, second, I took a uh, just a really quick look, Scott, at a few of the listings, and it looks like the angle that they're going for here is this candle smells better than Doggo Argentinio breath, or this, this candle smells better than Munsterlander breath or pug breath. And while that is um, like a thing that you can do, I would never be looking for a candle for myself and type in Munsterlander candle. No offense, Owen. Um, <laughs> but my dad might, right? But to get to that thing, they have to type in Munsterlander or Pug or whatever into Etsy, see that there's a candle and then go, yeah, their breath smells really bad, right? Right. There are some examples, uh, like the one that you just showed, of successful stores that have the candle approach, and it's the use of the candle that becomes important. So if this were me, unless you love making candles, like that's your thing and you're actually making these, these aren't being shipped print on demand, right? I would be taking a look at where that passion really comes from. And there is something in the fur, F-I-R or F-U-R, however you want to spell it, uh, and fig thing in like an outdoor dog's thing, 
right? Where it's like, this candle smells better than when you bring your dog in from outside. You have dog, like working dogs outside. That's like art or decor that you have, right? Like you could still go after the dog market and have it be like an outdoor homey woodsy thing. Um, there is definitely a niche in there. You'd have to find it, right? Right. But if you're going to strictly be a candle store, you have to think about how the candle is being used, which then leads you to how the candle is being searched for. As a dog owner, I would never have found this myself. No. Somebody might get it for me as a gift, but I also have no reason to buy that candle again, right? With something like the meditation candles that you were showing, Scott, the entire use of that candle is dedicated to the activity. And so if I got use, uh, you know, a useful meditation out of that candle, I'm probably going to buy that same candle again. If somebody gets me uh, this smells better than your dog's breath and it just smells like vanilla or whatever, that's just a vanilla candle to me. It's a nice gift, but it doesn't necessarily keep me around for the long term, which I think is something that a lot of people miss in their niche research and in their product creation is, is this something that anybody would ever buy again? Or would this lead them to come back to my store to buy something else? And in, in this case, I'm not seeing that just because of the relationship of like the dog and the candle side of things. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And, uh, I think it does come down to the activity, right? And th is this a, is this a funny gift that you could give someone? Sure. You know, but like you said, are you searching for that candle? No, you'd have to stumble on it or you'd have to find it when you were searching for something else. So we want to go after things that people are actively searching for like right now. And there are people searching for meditation, uh, candles or energy healing candles or any of that stuff, right? Like all of that stuff within um, you know, having good energy and, uh, spiritual, like all of that stuff, there's always going to be searches for that, whether it's a gift or whether it's just you personally wanting them. So that's what I would keep in mind. So, okay, cool. So that was a good one. I, I did like that. I will say this again, if you guys are showing up here late, if you are, you're asking like, what is the tool that we're using? We are using, uh, Everbee. I'll go ahead and slap that link up there if you guys are interested in trying it for free. Yes, we are an affiliate. Yes, we earn a cup of coffee if you upgrade to the pro plan, but you don't have to because you can try it for free at brandcreators.com forward slash everbe. And uh, that's the tool that we're using. And I'm not even exaggerating. I probably use it 25 to 30 times a day. And that's if I'm not even doing my own product research. I'm using it for you guys, but I'm also using it for ourselves. Um, so I use it every single day. It's like my hammer. Um, if I was a contractor, I'm using it every day. Um, so check that one out. Um, all right. So I got a question now for you guys. We are past the time that I was supposed to be here. I, I was hoping an hour we'd be able to nail this. I've got one more. Did you guys want me to go a touch longer? I can maybe go five to seven more minutes. Um, if you guys want me to share that one, or if you guys want me to share that for the next time that we do one of these, let me know. But if you do want me to share this next one and give you my quick thoughts on it, I think it is a good one. Drop a yes in the comments. Let me know. And uh, I'm going to take a sip of water and Chris, let me know what they say. Uh, yes, 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 please. Let's go. Yes, please. Yes, please. PLZ. Uh, and a bunch of yeses. So we got people rolling in, uh, asking for us to do that. I'm going to take a sip of water while you dive into that and we'll knock this one out as well. All right, cool. Yeah. This one's going to be quick. Uh, I, I did that on purpose guys. So I could get a drink of water. That was the real reason. Oh, that's um, the real trick. <laughs> that's the real trick. Sneaky, huh? All right. So here we go. All right. So this one here sent in from Sandra, Sandra, I want to thank you. Chris, I don't, here's, here's the thing. I was going to try to pronounce this. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to sound like, you know, like that bad at pronunciation. How would you, how would you say this name? Uh, wood toys and unique. Handcrafted <laughs> <homework>. oh. <laughs> so it's not I'd say so, so free, so free, like so S O F R E E so free sandcraft. Yep. Okay. So the name I, I personally, I, maybe there's some meaning behind it but I, it's hard for me to read. I love the store. Okay. I love the shop. I, and so what we're looking at here is, uh, basically wood toys and unique handcrafted homewares. And so, uh, and it's Montessori, uh, type, so, uh, handmade wooden toys as well, which we're going to get into that here in a second. So I love it. The banner is great. And the reason why I love the banner is because it shows a lot of the different products. It shows 
four different products and they are all, it looks like handmade. Now eh, the one might not be handmade, but it could be. Um, now here's the deal. This isn't print on demand. Now, could they do print on demand in this space? Absolutely. And we'll talk about that, but, uh, the announcement is filled out. Okay. Now the announcement doesn't go into why you created this shop. So that's one big takeaway that I want you guys to really, really hone in on, on your shop. The announcement, try and use that for an intro. Like someone walked into your shop. That's the announcement. They, they, they met you for the first time. Like let them know, Hey, there's my name. Here's why I started this shop, you know, and it's because you have kids and you wanted to have unique toys and you decided to start building them yourself or your father did or your grandfather did or whatever. Right. And now you want to bring them to everyone else so they can enjoy them. Like whatever the story is, people on Etsy, I'm telling you, they want a story. They want to know who you are that they're buying from. Right. So it's just a little bit more of a personal thing than it is on like Amazon or Walmart or any of those. So just keep that in mind. Love the pictures. Um, so we have like just some really unique looking games. It looks like we've got some a little domino set there that you kind of put in the little, I don't even know what they are, like little wood pieces. And then we've got like a little wooden horse that you can put like yarn through to make the tail um, uh, and the mane and all of that stuff. So really, really good. The name is the only thing I'm struggling with a little bit is because I it's hard to say, right? Unless it's just me, but it's not because Chris is usually really good at pronouncing things, even though he says he's not. Um, so that one there, the name we can always change, by the way, too, guys. We don't have to get stuck on a name. Um, now, the logo area. I think the name has to be in the logo. The logo just shows like one of the products. I would like that to be the name in there, okay? Um, and then the picture where it says Sandra, there's no picture. It's just the profile that's in there if you don't have a picture. So we want that in there. Um, so those are some just initial things that I see. I love this niche though, by the way. Love it. Um, products look really good. Product images look really good. Um, let's look at the categories real, real quick. We have 48 products, wooden toys, DIY kids, craft set, spatulas, craft shapes, personalized cloud. Um, how would you say that one there, Chris? Macrame. Macrame. Okay. Leafs, uh, and feathers, uh, Christmas keychains, uh, wristlets. Um, so these are all good. Um, but I think like spatulas, like we can, we can do better. Right. Um, DIY kids craft set. I like that. Right. Um, craft shapes probably want to beef that up a little bit and make that a little bit more of a keyword. Right. So I would just spend a little bit of time here, um, on doing the research on what you're really trying to get for people that are searching for this. Right. Uh, wooden Montessori, uh, G O G E O board game. It looks like or board toy for kids, uh, or a toddler, right? So I think if you go into that market, you're going to find there's a lot of traffic. All right. There's a lot of traffic in here and this is a great niche. Um, now that doesn't mean you only have to, to go into that niche, but it's a great one to, to start with. Um, and I actually pulled up an example here. So I just went up and just put in uh, Montessori and saw what came up. We have furniture, floor bed, bookshelf, toys, one year old shelf, uh, toys. Okay. And then you can personalize some stuff too. Right. So we have all of the, this different stuff. So this is where I'd be getting my ideas. If you guys are listening, you're not seeing this, but we have like, we have, uh, things that hang from, uh, for, for a baby, for like a, uh, you know, for a crib. Um, we have, these are great. Uh, like the wooden, uh, name signs that you can take out and in. So they kind of learn their name. Um, there's like little craft sets as far as like, with like, like a little bowl that has a wooden bowl with some yarn pieces that they can cut up. Uh, there's uh, first foods, uh, real pictures. Um, then there's obviously these bigger beds and things, but we're not going to go into those, but there's a lot of really cool, unique products. And from what I already saw on this site or on the shop, you have a lot of your own. So I think it's just a matter of knowing the types of toys that are being sold, going after those, optimizing your listing, make sure they have really good pictures. I'm going to go ahead and click into the, some of these pictures real quick, which the thumbnails look good. We have a video that's playing, which is great. And the, and the, the video just 
it's, and you can tell it's a real video. It's not like a slideshow. So it's actually showing the product with all of the little bands that go over these pegs. And then we just have a bunch of different, uh, different uh, pictures. It looks like these are very similar. Oh, it's just showing like different designs or different ways that you would use it. Creating an M. So you create letters with these little bands. It's a great little product. Okay. So I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think on the title, uh, it says Montessori home daycare toy, uh, Montessori learning tool. Um, so I would just, I would put separators in there. I would also capitalize the first letter of all of these, just easier to read. Um, description looks pretty good. Yep. Descriptions all look good. So yeah, I think it's great. Chris, what do you think? Uh, so the chat was chiming in and they said, hey, uh, if you're hand making this stuff and it's designed for kids, you may run into some issues like if the pegs come off and somebody wants to eat them, right? Mm -hmm. Putting that aside, I think one, we're definitely in a good niche, right? Like kids, craft, Montessori tools, those kinds of things. There's definitely a lot of room in that niche, lot, especially yeah. if you're hand making this stuff. Um, and I, I like the products overall. I don't know, Scott, that I have a ton of feedback beyond making sure and it it may be i saw that the store was based out of latvia it may just be cultural differences or whatever making sure that the english is 100 percent spot on that in the title and this is a mistake i see a lot of people making we are using title case which means we're capitalizing the first letter of every word all of those kinds of things the reason scott that a lot of people say that they don't do that is they think that etsy doesn't understand it if their Etsy search engine optimization tool or keyword research tool gives it to them in lowercase. They think it has to be in lowercase. That's not the case. Etsy understands that letters are sometimes capital, right? They're not, <laughs> they're not right. quite that rudimentary of a search engine. So make it easy for the customer. And that I think Scott is the, the biggest issue that I take in general with products on Etsy. Mm -hmm. The titles don't aren't always descriptive and the descriptions aren't always descriptive or helpful. And those are two of the biggest places uh, that you can gain more sales, at least based on our previous experience. We'll find out uh, when we get the survey results back from brandcreators.com forward slash survey. If you guys haven't filled that out yet, go ahead and do that. Um, but if we can make those user friendly in a readable sense and in a telling me what it is sense yeah. that goes a long way to increasing your conversion rate, which means when Etsy actually shows you that somebody has a better chance of buying the product once they make that decision. So if we can clean up a few of those small different things, I think we're in a, we're in a good niche and there's a lot of room to move there. Yeah. So awesome guys. So th this was awesome. Uh, we are not going to have time for live Q and a, but maybe what we'll do is we'll do a live Q and a session. Maybe next week, um, we'll definitely answer anything in the comments. So if you guys do have any, uh, any questions for us, drop them in the comments, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, if you're listening to it on the podcast, definitely show up and hang out with us over at brandcreators.com forward slash group. And, uh, that way there you can you can join us, but you can also ask questions in there as well if you're a podcast listener. Um, I will say this too. One of the things, like I said, the hardest thing that I'm seeing for people is really defining their niche and then doing the validation piece for that. So here's going to be a shameless plug that I'm going to give you right now. And it is a workshop that we created that helps with finding your niche and then validating the niche. And then finding products and validating the products. And that is uh, over at Niche Product Magic Workshop. If you head on over to brandcreators.com forward slash magic. All right. And uh, that's a workshop that we did. It's about two hours. Now, there's another bonus workshop that we recently did that was just on niche validation. So all we did was we spent that entire time on that workshop. And that's included in this training. So if you're struggling with figuring out your niche or, uh, you know, figuring out your products, your validation piece, all of that stuff, this is going to be the training that you're going to want to go through because that's exactly what we do. And by the end of that, of that time together during that workshop, you're going to walk away with having clarity. And that's key. Once we have that clarity, once we have the direction, everything else becomes easier because now we don't have to say, oh, we're going to jump on that trend. We're going to start doing dogs. Then we're going to start doing, I don't know, uh, you know, just fishing, bass fishing or whatever, right? We're not going to bounce around. We're going to stay within our niche or we might go ahead and find those sub niches. And that's also what we teach inside of the brandcreators.com forward slash magic, which is our niche product magic workshop. So check that one out. 
Once again, guys, I want to thank you for showing up. Thanks everyone for submitting those, uh, those Etsy shops to do these audits. I want to thank you guys. Wish we had more time to go through even more, but we will. Um, as long as you guys want us to do more, let us know in the comments and uh, we will do more of these in the future. So guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, take care, take action, have an awesome, amazing day, and we'll see you right back here on the next episode. Take care, guys.